the excitement here is that at a single cell level, we found that there's a skeletal stem cell. That cell gives rise to bone, cartilage, and bone marrow stromal cells that support blood forming cells. The hope is that by identifying that cell, that master cell for the skeletal tree, so to speak, that we can then understand what happens normally now and then what goes wrong in clinical conditions. If this is translatable to humans, we now have a way to isolate the stem cell for all of these tissues, direct the differentiation along one line or another, hopefully for the therapeutic uses to get cartilage for joints that have been destroyed by wear and tear, or if you're as old as me, and bone for non-healing fractures, and the bone marrow niche for those who've lost it one way or another. And so the clinical ramifications of this finding is that we can now design stem cell therapy um, to address uh, defects in the skeletal system ranging from osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, to disorders of uh, hematopoiesis, such as myelofibrosis. One of the things you may want to do is, is this a Jiffy Lube model? If you're showing signs of arthritis, might we be able to do things before it happens by providing cartilage forming cells or bone forming cells or some combination of cells that would prevent the devastating consequences that ultimately lead to joint replacement. So none of that's possible till you have the cell. I think when you identify a stem cell, then you can ask the questions, is this playing a role in these common conditions that involve the skeleton? And we've talked about several, aging and osteoporosis, arthritis. Um, we've talked about diabetes. We've talked about cancer and osteosarcoma. So I would imagine that as we have this lens, we'll be able to look at each one of those.